Hi, Caleb from Brownells here, and today I'm joined by Andrew from Surefire. Andrew, thanks for coming back out again. And um, we got some suppressors. Yes, sir, we do. So uh, we have uh, both our SOCOM 556 RC2 and our SOCOM 556 RC3. Nice. Um, which is new since the last time I think we've chatted here. It is. Um, so in general, the, the biggest difference is the RC3 is a low back pressure suppressor. Um, Suppressors generally, when you add them to a firearm, you're going to get an increased amount of back pressure. Uh, what that is is the amount of gas coming backwards, you know, not just out of the ejection port. That's the obvious place, but pretty much out of out of everywhere. Yeah. Um, and this, you know, is is slightly detrimental in the way that a those gases are extremely toxic and not good to breathe. Um, but also, you're going to probably be speeding up the gun, putting a little bit more heat, carbon, you know getting the, the bolt carrier group or the operating system more dirty, um, putting more wear and tear on parts. So if we can reduce that, ideally, um, it's gonna be a, a, a better, uh, better feeling firearm. It's gonna stay cleaner. Um, it's gonna feel flatter. Um, there's a lot of benefits to that. Um, there's no free lunch with our RC3. It's, you know, a lot of R&D went into it. It's a 3D printed core, it's still fully inconel, um, but there's a lot more cost that went into that suppressor, so the, the price of that is, is, is much greater than the RC2. Right. RC2 is still a phenomenal suppressor. It's still one of our best-selling suppressors. Um, and so, you know, for m most people, this is a great option um, given the price point. However, if, you know, we generally say if you're shooting a lot, you know, the, the ammo is probably going to outweigh the cost of the suppressor tenfold for those that are you know training quite a lot and and for those people I think you're really going to see the benefits both from a performance perspective but also a health perspective uh, if you're shooting a lot then the RC3 is going to net you a lot of benefits. Absolutely and so I've definitely noticed so shooting with you know standard suppressors versus low back pressure suppressors just sitting on the bench all day at like let's say for example our 500 yard just getting something dialed in on that the amount of just like fumes from that. And not only that, but I end up like on uh, my more precision rifle over there, I end up having to open up my gas system. Mm -hmm. Everything's getting absolutely filthy. And this is within just a, like a few boxes of ammo, right? So um, roughly uh, roughly 100 rounds of 5.56. And uh, low, the, switching to the low back pressure stuff was night and day difference. It was absolutely insane. So. Uh, for someone like me, the cost is definitely worth the benefits. Yep. Yeah, and you just made me realize, I don't know if I talked about, you know, the metrics on how much better it is. It's a 60% it's a reduction in back pressure. The RC3 is a 60% reduction in back pressure uh, compared to the RC2. And, and the way, the, there's a couple different ways, but the, the, the generally accepted way that the government came up with with back pressure testing is there's essentially you take an aquarium. It's like a sealed pe plexiglass and aluminum extruded tank. Uh, the firearm sits in that with the muzzle uh, protruding out with a little rubber gasket. And that's the, the bare muzzle or the suppressor muzzle. Uh, and therefore, everything inside that is being measured with some um, high-speed measurement de devices that pick up how many parts per million of all the different you know, metals and chemicals that are, that are coming out of the firearm. And so you kind of measure how many parts per million are, are in that chamber. Uh, after the shot and so as I said before it's a 60% reduction with the RC3 compared to the RC2 and that's significant you can definitely feel that when you shoot yeah for sure and I was gonna ask you how you got to that 60% number but uh, yeah that's super interesting so it's like 60% of the time every time <laughs> that's, just... a, that's exactly right <laughs> yeah um, just for those that might not be familiar I think we, we covered some of the stuff in a, in a video we did before but kind of our positioning on 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 what surefire brings to the table with suppressors is you know we've focused on built in, building suppressors for the warfighter um, obviously with the, the SOCOM contract suppressors um, and generally what that means is you know there's a whole bunch of different performance parameters with suppressors obvious one is sound uh, you have flash size weight durability your mounting mechanism back pressure, uh, you know, longevity, durability, all that stuff, there's a bunch of different attributes. And we'd like to think that we bring the best combination of all of those things from the, the warfighter's perspective. So generally when you tweak one of those, those levels, you're probably going to affect another one. And what I mean by that is if you want it to be lighter or smaller, it's probably generally going to get louder. It's going to get maybe less durable. There's, there's things that might be affected. Flash might be affected. Uh, we have really good first round flash performance 
as well as subsequent round flash performance once the suppressors heat up. Both of those things are kind of challenging to conquer, especially on low back pressure suppressors. Um, so again, we, we, we'd like to think we have the best combination of all those things where, you know, it's not absurdly large, it's not absurdly heavy. They are extremely durable above all else, really good flash performance. Um, our mounting mechanism is super solid, our, our SOCOM muzzle devices, that's flash hiders, muzzle brakes. We have a bunch of different um, muzzle devices that you can mount these with. Uh, and that's, that provides a minimal impact shift when you use our muzzle devices to mount our suppressors and it's 100% repeatable. So if you zero the weapon with the suppressor on, take it off for maintenance and then put it back on, it's gonna hit exactly where you did before. Um, so again, that's kind of the, the positioning for those that might not be familiar with, with our suppressors, that's kind of where we are in the market and what we aim to, to accomplish. Yeah, so I mean, if those are the, the things that are important to you, you're not looking for something that's like an ultra lightweight or something like that, uh, but you want something that's extremely durable, then Surefire suppressors are the way to go. Especially like whenever we're shooting something belt fed mm -hmm. um, and I want to suppress it, the, I, I'm, I'm going to go straight for the Surefire suppressor every single time because I know it'll, it'll take it. Yep, yep, definitely. Yep, and it'll also keep running with the gun because a lot of times you put a suppressor on something that's you know, time to run full auto, uh, that changes things dramatically. It can. Um, but, you know, with the, the flow through technology, uh, it's a lot less of an impact, so. Yes, yeah. sir. Well, Andrew, thanks for coming out. And uh, if y'all are looking for some a new suppressor, you're in the market for something to uh, be a little quieter, you know, then check out Surefire. And uh, of course they are on brownells.com. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, you can reach out to Surefire directly because this dude just did a knowledge dump and he knows a lot of stuff, apparently. Uh, so you can reach out to Surefire directly. Uh, if not, feel free to give us a call on the tech line. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.